So we're going to start by opening up a terminal and globally installing Angular with npm install minus g at angular slash cli. Once that's done, I'm going to create my app by typing ng new dash my app dash dash style scss dash dash routing false. Then we're going to cd into the created directory and open up our project in VS Code. After that, I'm going to open up my editor's terminal and run ng-serve. And if everything has gone according to plan, we should now have a web server at localhost 4200. Next, we're going to add the aggrid npm package by running npm install dash dash save aggrid community and we're also going to be installing ag grid angular following that i'm going to run npm install again now the reason for this is because npm will perform an auto prune this will ensure that all the expected dependencies are present and now that that's done we can start coding let's start by adding the ag grid angular module to our app module in source slash app slash app dot module dot ts so this code is mainly plumbing. This is where we import the AG Grid modules and our other components. The next step will be to add the AG Grid styles, which we will import into our styles.scss file. This code imports the grid style sheet and the most popular and ready to use theme available, AG Theme Balum. Now we're going to declare some basic grid configurations in the source slash app slash components .ts file. The code here contains two essential configuration properties for the grid. The column definitions as the cold Fs, which outline the three columns for our grid, one of make, one for model, and another for price. Each column has a header and a data field to be displayed in the body of the table. Our row data will also have three entries, representing three rows of data. Each row has three couplings, each representing a field in the column defs. Lastly, we'll need to add the component definition to our template in the app slash app.component.html file. This file contains the AG grid component definition with two property bindings, row data and column defs. The component also accepts the standard DOM style and class. We've set the class to AG theme Balum, which defines the grid's theme, as mentioned before, and the CSS class matches the name of the CSS file, which we imported earlier. And if everything works, we should see a simple grid like this one here. Here we can see the three columns we defined in the column defs and the rows from the row data. Now let's enable sorting and filtering so the grid can help us easily find the least or most expensive car. Luckily, enabling sorting is quite simple. All we need to do to achieve this is to just set the sortable property in each of the columns we want to be able to sort by. So I've set it to true in all three. And now if we go back to our grid and click click on the headers of the column, we can see that they're being automatically sorted. Next, let's enable filtering. And filtering is just the same as sorting. Once again, we only have to set the filter property to true in each of the columns we want to be able to filter in. With this property set, the grid will display a small column menu when you hover over the header. Pressing it will display a pop-up with a filtering UI, which lets you choose the kind of filter and the text that you want to filter by. Let's try filtering by Celica in the model column. And just like that, it works. So far, we've been hard coding our data, but that's not gonna get us very far. In the real world, we're more likely to be dealing with data from a remote server. Thanks to Angular, implementing this is quite simple and can be done using Angular's HTTP client and an async pipe. Here you can see that we're importing Angular's HTTP client module. Next, we will need to get rid of the hard-coded row data in source slash app component .ts and import the HTTP client from at angular slash common slash HTTP. Next, we will need to get rid of the hard-coded row data and import the HTTP client from at angular slash common slash HTTP.
This code turns the row data from a hard-coded array to an observable. For the grid to work with it, we need to add an async pipe to the property in our app.component.html like this. Now, if we look at our grid, we'll see that instead of just three rows, there's many. Now let's add checkboxes to our grid so we can select rows that we're interested in. This can be done in the same way as we did for sorting and filtering. We simply need to add the checkbox selection property to the columns that we want the checkboxes to be in. Let's add this now to our make column. But before we can fully utilize this feature, we need to enable multiple row selection in our app component.html. Now we should be able to select rows. Give this a go now if you like, but before I do, I'm going to add a button that gets the selected data and fires off an alert with the row data of the selected rows. It's important here to remember to make the instance accessible in our component.ts. Now the wiring has been done, which allows us to utilize AG Grid's API to access our data. This gives us an incredible amount of power and flexibility within our app. So let me show you how you can utilize this to get your selected rows and output them as an alert. Before in our component, we put a reference to a get selected rows function that doesn't exist yet. Let's make it now so that when the button is pressed, something happens. In this function, I'll be using the API to get our selected nodes. Then we'll map over these nodes to get the data. And then we'll map again to join the make and the model and output as a string and then output it via the alert. And now if we look at our grid, we can see that a range of rows can be selected. And then if we click the get rows button, we'll see an alert. Just like the features we added before, grouping is an easy addition to the grid. For this, we'll need to bring up the terminal again and install AG Grid Enterprise. Next, we'll need to add the import to our app.module.ts. Now, if we open up the dev tools on our grid, we'll notice a big red notification. It's just saying that we're using an unlicensed version of Enterprise. As this version is here only for development and learning, this is fine. So now we have Enterprise enabled. We can go ahead and add grouping. So first what I'm gonna do is get rid of some code that I don't need to show this particular feature. You'll notice here that I've taken out the model column. This is because I'm going to be using that column for grouping. In my make field, I have enabled row group with row group true. Then I added an auto group column def. In here, I've got the model header name, the model field, a cell renderer, and some cell renderer params that allow us to represent a checkbox. Next, I'm going to add the auto group column def to our template like so. Now that this has been added, we now have checkboxes and grouping. Let's look at this now. The groups can be selectable, but when a user selects a group, all of their leaf nodes are not selected. This fix is actually really easy to implement. All you have to do is go back to the template and add the property group selects children equals true. Now, if we go back to our grid, we'll see that a try state appears. It's possible to select the entire group by selecting the grouping node, and it's also possible to select individuals within the group. And the try state is, we'll have a tick when the entire group is selected, a dash when parts of the group are selected, and an empty box when nothing is selected. Thank you for watching.